Hey everybody, how's it going? Dan Schinder here with... Steven Schinder. On Yes Shift. A father-son podcast about Yes and Yes members and people who've worked with Yes members. Bit of periphery. And this is a special episode about two special people who are also... We're a father and son team. It's Virgil and Steve Howe. And we're going to cover a couple albums, aren't we, Steve? Take it away while I move my camera over a bit. Yeah, and this is uh, in honor of Virgil Howe's birthday. Uh, he was born September 23rd, 1975. Unfortunately, died from a heart attack five years ago, September 11th, 2017. And so the albums we're talking about today, the first one that this father-son team did was Nexus, which came out uh, shortly after Virgil's passing, it came out in August, of, or sorry, it was completed in August of 2017 and came out in November that year. Right. And then now today, uh, the follow-up album Lunar Mist came out and we've ordered our CDs from Burning Shed, but they put like the official playlist over on the official Virgil and Steve Howe YouTube channel. So we were able to give that a listen the whole album and so we're talking about both of them now yeah and today as we're recording this this is september 23rd 2022 and steve and i are big on um owning the product you know like there's so much stuff available on youtube and there's kind of an argument uh, about that if it's officially put on by the artist and they've monetized the channel i will always sit through the commercials and sometimes i find some pretty good stuff actually but Steve and I are old school. I think you probably get that from me. I'm guessing just being able to, you know, like we've got, I think, uh, one of our Yes guests pieces here, Oliver Wakeman's beautiful box set. And so I'm excited yeah. to get those two CDs. Um, and we've got Carl Palmer's yeah. ELP box set. And what have you got there? Yeah, well, I was just about to say over on Burning Shed, uh, it says for... Lunar Mist, it's a 180G vinyl and single sleeve with insert and CD, so that'll be nice. Yeah, we um, got to get record players. Yeah, but um, yeah, th this is my uh, CD copy of Nexus, which I got about uh, four or so years ago, maybe four and a half. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get into that, but um, yeah, yeah I, I guess we should, um, should we start with like the background for Nexus yeah. and then go from there? Yeah, let's do that. And I do want to mention that uh, the opening piece was from uh, one of the pieces they did with, that we'll talk about a little bit more a little bit later. So if you didn't recognize it as Yes Music, as we usually play when we do these, unless it's someone's solo piece, that's probably why. Right. So before Nexus's release, uh, there was, and I found out about this courtesy of the Yescography fan site, so thank you very much. Um, it, in a BBC radio interview, I think it was in July of 2017, Virgil said that Nexus was, quote, something very special to me. I had some piano tunes that I did just over the years, just little ideas, and he, uh, he being his dad, Steve Howe, ended up playing guitar on some of them. Then I ended up putting drums on them. Then I ended up mixing them and putting some more synths on them and trying to make them sound cool and not like spa music. I didn't want like a new age album. So I made it quite trippy, psychedelic, spacey. It's a space theme kind of thing. And it's just me and my dad. Now, that's an interesting quote to me because it does have all those vibes he mentions, you know, psychedelic and spacey. But uh, to me, I do also kind of feel a new age vibe, which I mean, yeah. that's not a bad thing. I do like some new age music. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite artists that I think crosses over into new age is Kitaro, who John did some work with, you know. Yeah. But the one thing about that quote that gave me pause I, re I literally had to like sit back for a moment and think is where he uses the term spa music. And I never heard that before, but yet I knew exactly what he meant because when we lived in Las Vegas, we had our friend who did massage therapy and all this stuff. So it kind of put me back there and I thought, what kind of music did Lynette put on? And I thought, okay, so that's what he's talking about. I love that. It's, it's, 
it paints a picture in a way, you know, at least for me it did. Yeah, it does. Um, and so going further, um, this is a quote from Steve Howe. He said, Virgil and I had, and this is about Nexus again, uh, Virgil and I had only recently completed recording Nexus, which contains 11 of his tunes to which I added a guitar to suit each one. Nexus explores a completely different side of Virgil's ability as a writer and keyboard player. His talents were multi-diverse and he always gave his best. We hope that the music just completed will stand as a fitting tribute to his life and legacy. And I think Steve, what, what the other Steve is referring to Mr. Howe is when he says Virgil and I had only recently completed, I think he's referring to the time, to the time context of Virgil's passing, right? Uh, yeah, and I believe this quote was after he passed. I, I think I got this from the Burning Shed listing from when it came out. So, yeah. yeah, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's heavy stuff. I mean, yes, we're having their Yestival tour with Dylan on drums, and they had to, like, cancel some of the shows because yeah. of this sad family tragedy. Um, yeah, and, I can't even... Imagine, I mean, I know it might be kind of awkward because you're here, but uh, for those of you who have kids, you know, I think that's the the only thing I'm afraid of in life is that happening, let alone being so far away. You know, there's been a couple times where we've thought about moving out of the country, and I don't want to be that far away if something like that were to happen or or if I'm the one, you know, just... So I, I, I can't even uh, imagine, and to see Steve back on stage and playing and creating and everything is is really neat. I don't know if I would have the strength, so I, I admire that so much. But something else that Steve Howe said about Virgil when he talks about his musical legacy, this man had such an arc of not just creativity, but skill sets. When we covered uh, Virgil's album, I guess maybe it was on his birthday last year. Oh, yeah, album. yes, remixes. Yeah, that was so nothing like what I imagined. I literally thought it was going to be, yes, music where maybe the bass stands out more, the drums are EQ'd a little different, and it ended up being this whole other, like, you know, it's like if you go down a menu, you order something you've had somewhere else before, and it comes to you, and it's, like, completely different, but the names are the same, you know? Yeah, like, and whether people enjoy Yes remixes will vary. I have heard from someone that's not really their cup of tea, but I've heard someone else say that they prefer the Yes remixes version of Arriving UFO over the Tormato yeah. version. And re-listening to it earlier, I thought to myself, you know what, I, I think I do prefer this over the Tormato version. It's got some nice, uh, a nice drum beat, like the way it sounds on the Yes Remixes uh, version. Like, and I think it's very good. It is. And I'm going to listen to it later um, in honor of Virgil's birthday. The other thing I just want to mention about that, just like these two albums, very well rounded package. The cover of that matched the music. And I saw, like we do, I, I saw the cover before I heard any of it. Come on in. I have animals in here now and and it just fit perfectly and it was at first i thought huh this is interesting like i wonder what is in this and it was so far from what i imagined so he really 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 was a talented man yeah the cover art was actually done by virgil's daughter zuni uh, for both nexus and lunar mist um yeah. I, I think her birthday is either uh, like she just turned 10 years old and her birthday is either the same day or the day before his, I think. So, yeah, it's really nice that they had her do that. And, and yeah, I, I agree. It fits the music. Um, you know, just thinking about all the colors moving like in space and stuff mm -hmm. is what I imagine. Yeah, I'm showing um, both of them now. Yeah, I, I like that they continued the theme with Lunar Mist. Like, they really complement each other. I could get multiple colors against white, and they get it against black. So they yeah. really do complement each other. And there's our two favorite gentlemen of subject. 
Yeah, that photo of Virgil and Steve was taken by Stephanie House of Virgil's sister, Steve House's daughter. It's, it's really nice to see them side by side. Like this really was a nice collaboration. You know, it wasn't just a Steve Howe solo album with Virgil as a guest. You know, it really was. There's a lot of Virgil on, on this music. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, if anything, as Steve Howe says, um, and I don't mean to minimize Mr. Howe's work, but it, in some sort of way, it's like he kind of added some treatments to stuff that Virgil already had in the can, basically. Um, but it's all beautifully done. Um, we can't play the music for you or show you the video without us talking and and i won't while we're well maybe a little bit while we're talking because it'll get muted it's the official release and then we have to jump through some hoops fill out some forms and it's muted until that happens sometimes it's within 24 hours sometimes it's three weeks so go get it or steve perhaps put the two playlist links in the comments oh, yeah. if you haven't already um and i'm gonna go ahead and and read from our notes a little bit um, yeah, because I, I think the next couple of paragraphs are on um, Lunar Mist, so I wasn't sure if we want to read those first or, or if we want to discuss Nexus first and then get Up to into you. Those. Totally up to you. You want to discuss Nexus first and then go back to Lunar Mist? Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So uh, I guess I kind of want to start with like how I... Um, first discovered the album, I guess, you know, I was aware it, it, like the timing was strange because it, it was an, around the time, you know, Virgil's passing was around the time that I flew out to England to study abroad five years ago. And so I heard the news online at some point and I was really upset about it. And then sometime later in that autumn quarter, that music video for the girls leaving Aurora came out and it, you know, it showed Steve Howe playing and, you know, the cross fading of pictures of Virgil and it has performing and in the studio and it's a very touching video. Yeah. It, like it had a very, and I don't know if this was because I knew of Virgil's passing, but it felt like it had a somber feel to it, you know, watching him play and, um, you know, and you could tell that he's, it's, supposed to be like a, a very touching tribute and effective yeah. one to Virgil. And it was just, it, get, it gets you thinking, you know, like, like you said, it's not easy to be the one who outlives um, their own child. And I, I can't like, you know, the fact that Steve is still performing, like I, I honestly don't know how he does it, but he, he does it. He gets his work done. And like me and my mom talked about this, uh, few years ago when um like when we were in the hospital because um, my grandma like her mom was there and we were talking uh during like in the cafeteria i think about how people sometimes need to do their passion to get through all of it you know like for steve how that's the music and for someone like me it might be writing or improv or something so yeah for me, it's graffiti on buses. Just right. kidding. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I've known, gosh, more than a handful of people, you know, in that situation personally. And then there's, there's some of our heroes that have been through it. Robert Plant, Eric Clapton. Um, and I, I, I it's, it's a, like you said, it's a, it's a heavy thing. So if you happen to be seeing this, Mr. Howe, we just so appreciate what you've brought to the world and, and how you have gotten through this to the extent that you have and keep bringing us wonderful music. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it was a while before I got the Nexus CD. I think I got it either during the latter half of my senior year in college in 2018, or it might've been like midway through that year, but I'd heard bits of the music um, before getting the CD. But once I got the CD, I was just, you know, I, I was listening to it intently and very much enjoying it, the overall 
feel of it and just appreciating it at all. Absolutely. So do you have a favorite track? Yeah, I think it's probably, it's probably leaving Aurora because of how impactful and the staying power it has because of the reasons we mentioned, but um, well, I'll, I'll read the track list over real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so the track list for Nexus includes the title track Nexus, Hidden Planet, Leaving Aurora, Nyx Star, Nighthawk, Moon Rising, Passing Titan, Dawn Mission, Astral Plane, Infinite Space, and Freefall. Yeah, so I have like a few notes about these songs, but what are your overall thoughts and do you have a favorite? I do. And I'll start with that. Once again, I, I really didn't know what to expect. It wasn't what I thought I might have expected. Um, it's much more spacier and mellower than I expected, but I'm very happy with it. You know, it's not like I was let down. It was just a different flavor than I expected. Um, I agree. Leaving Aurora is probably my favorite. Um, I love passing Titan and it, there's some irony in that name, of course, mm. and it refers to the moon Titan, uh, but it could be referring to Virgil now. Yeah. Titan and um, music. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Even think of that. Yeah. Um, I also like, um, uh, astral plane. I liked that one too. I like them all, but those are my favorites. Yeah. Um, it, was it what it, you expected when you got it? And folks, chime in, by the way, we forgot to say that. We always say that. Chime in if you've heard this, if you haven't heard it, let us know. And if you've heard it, give us your thoughts on the same questions. Because we don't discuss this ahead of time. Like when right. I'm asking Steve, we don't say, okay, so I'm going to say this. And then you, we like, we don't talk about it. We keep the answers from each other intentionally. I almost said intelligently, and that would be wrong. Intentionally. <laughs> until the show. So let us know. But Steve, what was it anywhere near what you expected? Or did you not have expectations? It's hard for me not to have some sort of preconceived expectation. If I'm familiar with someone's music prior, something's coming out, there's some sort of blob that forms in my head. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. Because with Steve Howe's albums, you know, I tend to expect, uh, you know, his, I feel like his solo albums have a main sort of feel that I tend to expect, like some acoustic guitar stuff, maybe. <laughs> I was going to say, I think oh, that main feel is Steve Howe, but I know what you mean. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, musical with, themes. I know what you mean. Yeah. But, but with Nexus, it, like, I wasn't really aware of it until Virgil's passing possibly. So, um, I think when the music video for leaving Aurora came out, that's when, I sort of had my expectations of what it would be like. It'd be kind of synthy and spacey in places. Um, but when I got the album, uh, when, when whenever I listened to like the whole thing, it, you know, it does have some jazzy sounding moments. Yeah. And so I think that might have been a little bit surprising to me in a good way. Like it feels like a good mix of various things. Um, I mean, the Todd track Nexus, it starts off kind of, unassuming like with do, 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 do. I think that's how it starts and it sets the tone before like you know taking you on this journey with the do, do, do. like it just feels very ethereal I and was then, just thinking that same word yeah absolutely yeah and hidden planet has a mysterious vibe before that's that gets in a jazzy groove mm -hmm. um I feel like leaving Aurora and like, I feel like that and a couple of later songs like Moon Rising and Infinite Space kind of feel like they're part of the same story to me because of the similar sounds that are used. Um, Nick's Star, you know, the keys on that make me think of like Twinkling Stars. And that, that's an interesting thing that happens with music is sometimes the song title informs how you view the piece. Yes. Yeah. And um, well, uh, by the way, I would just want to interject. Do you know who Nick is? What is Nick referring to? Refers to. Do you um, know? 
I'm actually not sure. I I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, I haven't figured that out. I'm trying to wonder if it, if it's. I'm trying to think of an astronomer who discovered a star, or if it's an astronaut's first name without a last name. It's kind of a mystery, but I have a feeling it's along those lines. Possibly an astronomer. Right, or it could be like someone they worked with or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can find anything. Okay. On that, but. Yeah, Passing Titan, uh, like you mentioned, um, it, that one starts, it, it feels kind of quiet and subdued in places, but it really fits because to me, it makes me feel like I'm passing through empty space, kind of having some uh, moments of solitude and whatnot, and, but it has like nice melodies coming in like doo 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 um, and you get like more sci-fi feels like across this album, like with Dawn Mission. Um, mm -hmm. Astral Plane has some good melody as well. Um, and Free Fall, uh, I don't know if you felt the same way, but Free Fall has like the ending, you know, as an ending to the album feels a bit more subtle than I would maybe expect. But I don't know if that's just me. But. You know, so there's an interesting note about that. I wonder how much influence Steve Howe has had in the past with some of the Yes albums ending that way, like with Relayer, um, The Ladder, or rather, I'm sorry, um, Magnification, where it just cools off at the end. I wonder if that's part of his stamp on everything as far as what order the albums come out and he did it on this work as well. I, or if that was Virgil was influenced by that. I don't know. I just kind of realized that, that there's that common thread. I also just realized, <laughs> I just realized the correlation of why you wore the astronaut shirt. I should have worn my NASA shirt. I didn't think of that. Oh yeah. It's got like astronaut and yeah. the moon. Um, trying to but move I my mind. got <laughs> kicked out of NASA. So I don't know if I'm allowed to wear the shirt anymore. It's another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get like a copyright claim or something. Um, but um, yeah, but that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. The fact that some Yes albums do end that way. Like yeah. Infinite Space does feel like it could have been the final track. And then you get to Free Fall, which is still a good track. It's just kind of surprising for an ending to this. But not really, if you consider what I brought up. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the antithesis of that is that Steve Howe's first solo album, Beginnings, ends with probably the most energetic song on that album. Oh, yeah. Which is my favorite song on that album. Oh, man, I can't even think of it. Or it'll just, it'll play in my head like it's a small world for days. I need, <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go listen to it or play to it in the studio later. Yeah, you, you put that one into heavy rotation after we talked about it. I anger. did. I, I had that album up on this laptop for literally about three months. And it became my working music when I didn't need to use my ears or, you know, focus real hard. And, and then that song especially, I just love that song. And I think that going back to expectations, for, for some reason, we're going way back in time when that album came out. What, the year uh, that... Um, Virgil was born. I, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I always think of that's my model of Steve Howe's solo work, even though he's done everything from the Bob Dylan tribute to Homebrew to all these other things, but somehow my brain goes back to that album. Like, oh, it's probably has a little bit of this in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just a natural flashback. Now, having said that, there are some pieces between both these albums that have some really, really, really nice retrospective sounds that are signature sounds of Steve Howes and particularly mm -hmm. uh, one of that slightly like distorted lap steel guitar sound. Yeah. Um, that's in there and a couple things. So it's, it's this signature that he's carried through decades in his music. And it was nice to discover those little gems um, along the way in this. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we might have, I don't know, maybe some more thoughts on Nexus will pop up as we keep going through this. But do you have like anything else you want to say on that before we shift gears to Lunar Mist? Um, it is going into my library of music to work by, I like to call it. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, great I, mood music, you know, to just, you know, like if I. Whoop, hello. <laughs> you know, it, it's perfect for this. You know what I mean? It's it's really nice and just yeah. when I need uh, to just bring myself, my vibration down, it's great. It's great. Yeah, for those uh, listening to the audio version, oh. um, uh, my dad just uh, dimmed the lights mm -hmm. so that the room looks purple. And um, yeah, I don't know how else to describe that. Yeah, I got a, yeah. I got a candle, I got an amber salt light, and then I got a blue strip lighting behind a yeah. bookcase lighting things up. And it's just kind of moody. I'm lit up by this three foot screen that I'm on. And it's just the music I think is real suitable for that, you know? Yeah. And Nexus uh, became like an album I, I'm like very familiar with. Like, I feel like it's been, you know, part of my listening for so long. Like I've probably listened to it at least several times, but like that was enough for like much of the music to feel very familiar and it's like yeah i know this music now it's pretty much part of my internal lexicon oh, really? i guess you could call it oh wow uh, interesting well, like, like I when i listen that. when i listen to it it's like oh yes of course i, I know this song yeah that's cool all right so uh getting on to the newly released lunar mist uh, we'll go into the background Ooh. info for that real quick yeah i'll talk about what steve Hell told prague magazine earlier this year he says after nexus i thought maybe that was it and we wouldn't have any more resources for virgil's music we had a track of his called lunar mist completely finished for a japanese release which never transpired it sat on the shelf but when i played it again i thought it was fantastic virgil had added so much production keyboard and development ideas so then i had a good dig around uh, then Steve uh, began working on the new material over Christmas of 2020, so less than a year ago. He explains, I started by writing chord charts for all the other tunes before adding guitars, bass to embellish them and bring them into completion. In the most part, I kept them as he'd written them, but sometimes I expanded them with further ideas and improvisation. Virgil shows some different musical characteristics here that were such a joy to play on. There's more of his great drumming and a broader inventiveness in his compositions. And again, this uh, album, I'm going to pull up the album art really quickly so everyone can see yeah. this and, one. Yeah, and Christmas 2020 was actually almost two years ago, but yeah, time's just been weird Oh, I said 20, us. sorry. I, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> time warp all the time. I am back here. I'll go back here, being that I don't know how to read dates. Right, but... but um. But yeah, this was a surprise that, you know, he was very quiet about it until it got announced a couple months ago. And because we didn't like him, we thought like that was it, that Ver was just Nexus. But yeah, there's like this, some more music for him to you work know, off of to honor Virgil. And it absolutely begs the question, what else might be found? You know, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I think of. I have so much stuff here, so much stuff in this one little closet alone here. I have hard drives of God knows what now, hard drives and, and tapes. And I've got a whole closet downstairs in my studio of just, you know, like it would take years for you people to go through that. <laughs> you know? it, it would. And, and I wonder if Steve might find some other works by Virgil that, he forgot about that Steve Howe himself forgot about or maybe wasn't aware of or you know I think of that all the time that the chore that Angela would have and we live just so you folks know intentionally nowhere near any of our 11 combined kids okay <laughs> <laughs> so she I always think of like you know she's got to get Alex and Kavan perhaps to come stay with her go through stuff and find who knows what maybe there's stuff I don't want her to find I don't know just kidding <laughs> but, you know, it, it's true. It could beg the question, what else might turn up someday? Wouldn't that be yeah. interesting that there's three more albums worth of music? If he was that creative, I would think he was, had, as we all do as creatives, no matter what we do, whether it's sewing, whether it's writing, whether it's music or whatever, you know, prolific moments of pumping out, you know, you get these like spurts, right? These spikes in your timeline of creativity. So who knows? 
Yeah, because Steve Howe does seem like like he pretty much keeps everything. That's what his homebrew albums are. It's all yeah. his demos for all the different bands that he was in. Like he doesn't really throw anything That's out. That's me, totally. Some of these cassettes right there are from bands I was in in the 70s. I mean, wow. I have, I, have <laughs> I won't even go into it. Tapes up there on reel to reel. I, I mean, I, I'm like that. I have everything that didn't get lost or stolen, which is right. very, very few things got misplaced or lost or stolen. But yeah, so maybe his daughter will find something in 30 years. Who knows? Wouldn't that uh, be neat? And then measure that against how does it sound with today's music 30 years from now? Because if you take these two albums, they could have come out before he wrote them and they would have been timeless and i do really believe now they're timeless they they could have come out 10 years from now and they'd be like okay this is new music they don't sound dated to me yeah like these uh well i do have a bit of a comment for lunar mist but that that kind of connects to that but i was just reminded of something like when you were talking about you know, discovering something and making, releasing it like decades later. Like that, that reminds me of what they did with uh, Jimi Hendrix, like a oh. decade or so ago, you know, with Valleys of Neptune, I think it was. Yeah. Like they put out an album like 40 years after his passing. And that was a huge thing, you know? Yeah. I wonder, do you happen to remember what the delay was in that? Was it getting the right deal? Was it copyright management was it oh look what we found you know that <laughs> many years later what was the deal um i'm skimming the article about it real quick um and there's been similar instances but that's probably the best example right um, at led zeppelin coda you know they put stuff out that was never released right uh yeah i feel like this is like too elaborate for too. me to come up with a straight answer. Okay, but. no, that's okay. It was just a <laughs> point of curiosity for myself. But um, so Nexus, or rather, I'm sorry, Lunar Mist track list. I'm going to go through that. We got Lunar Mist, More Than You Know, Plexus, Mariah's Theme. Do you know who Mariah is? I'm sorry that I don't. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that either. His wife, maybe? Um. No, because uh, I think I I know he was with uh, I think her name was Jen Dawson and Zuni was their daughter. Okay, um, so I, like I, I don't maybe really know a doggy or something, but I don't want to speculate and be that far off. So a month in the sun. Yeah, like I want to be like inaccurate about yeah. this stuff. It, as if belief, nevertheless, Lothian's way, free spirit, eternal, diorama. Not diorama, but diorama, pinnacle, pagoda, and Martian mood. And we're going to play some of Martian mood later on our way out. So listen to the end. We're going to use that as our outro music. One thing I want to point out about both of these albums that have very interesting similarities is um, there's a lot of very short pieces under three minutes. And they, they work so well. And if I may assert first what my favorite is here it's actually something that i kind of didn't realize as i was working and listening the first time through that these three pieces are indeed three separate pieces and they go so well they're arranged in such a great order and for me that's diorama pinnacle and pagoda just flow so nicely uh, mm. into each other i love those three pieces a lot yeah those, those are really great choices um the album is like still very new to me. Like, but even after listening to through it, twice, I need a favorite. Like, What's your favorite? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just like scrolling through my notes and seeing. Um, well, I don't know if it's my favorite, but the one that stands out the most because of how different it feels from the rest, I think, is Martian Mood. Ah, it's it is it's, very different. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the most alien sounding one. Like when I was listening to it, I, you know, I was like, oh, this sounds very spacey. And then I look at the title and it's like, oh, of course, Martian Mood. Yeah. Um, and 
weirdly, it, it feels like something it kind of felt to me like one of those experimental sounding tracks that you might hear on something uh, Bill Bruford would mm. work on, like with either his band Bruford or with Earthworks. So, Interesting. Yeah. Um, I do think it's uh, it's a strong ending for Lunar Mist. Um, you know, the album begins with a casual vibe with the title track and a gentle more than you know. And I also like how a couple of these tracks, you know, they're very creative with the names. They're like words where I have to look them up. So Plexus, um, I wasn't sure what, what that was until I looked it up. And it's a network of nerves or vessels in the body. And Pagoda is a Hindu or Buddhist temple or sacred building, typically a many-tiered tower in India and East Asia. And so for that one, like once I knew the definition, it was another sort of informing like what I imagined while listening to Pagoda. Like it sounded like... Um, it fits. It totally fits. Yeah, like I could imagine someone like walking up the steps of a temple or something as you know, in, in sync with the music and, you know, people See, may, maybe meditating or something. I'm going to look up a word I didn't know. And I just didn't take the time to look it up. I've never heard this word before. And it is, bear with me. Yeah. And also, <laughs> but before I looked up Plexus, initially what I thought that was is I thought, oh, maybe this is like some, mythological figure because wow. the music because the music video for it had like a centaur with the bow and arrow type yeah. of thing but no it's just a network for like so, blood vessels oh it's not looking up the right thing what are you looking i'm looking for? sorry i'm looking up diorama and it keeps wanting to pull up diorama so i'm wondering if it's uh, a different language or if they misspelled it on the album Probably not the latter. <laughs> not the yeah, album, or, the latter. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, or it could, be a, yeah. it could be a name for all we know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know what it means, but I love that piece. And then, as I mentioned, I love how those three flow together. Diorama, Pinnacle, and Pagoda. And then, like you said, it ends with something that's so different, which is cool. Yeah, and... Um, that being Martian mood. Yeah, and so... Um, you definitely have some of that spaciness coming back on some of these, like Lothian's Way definitely felt very spacey. Um, and there were bits that made me think of like romanticized medieval sounding music. Like I think Eternal was kind of oh. like that. Um, and Pinnacle, for some reason, the plucking of the strings stood out to me more. I think that's because of like the song title, just phonetically yeah. it sounds similar. Um, and midway through one of these songs, um, oh, it was actually Plexus. Like midway through that, there was a moment where the guitar was like escalating a bit and it reminded me, uh, like in my head, I was thinking, this reminds me of a classic Yes song that does like a similar moment like that, but which one is it? And then uh, thinking through it, I was like, oh, it's words on a page of, with, from the Oliver Wakeman era. So it's, Interesting. N not not necessarily from the seventies, like I was thinking, but it's kind of funny how that to me sounds like a classic Yes song. Yeah. Um, but going back to the thing about whether this is timeless, like I do think for the most part it is, but there were maybe two tracks where it felt to me like the beat uh, felt like something that would normally be put on more modern music. Yeah, and then, and then conversely, there's a one or two where you get a little bit of like world percussion going on. I don't remember yeah. now off the top of my head now if it was this album or the other one. Yeah, I think both Mariah and Diorama yeah. had that sort of beat sound I'm talking about um, where it feels like it's from maybe a bit computerized or something, but yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely um, some world vibes. Like on one of them, I f I thought maybe I heard something like a maraca. Um, and 
I think it was on a month in the sun. And so, mm-hmm. yeah. And it also has like a smooth jazz feel to it. You, you get like a little bit of those jazz feels on some of this as well. So yeah, it's not um, like, it, it doesn't feel exactly the same as Nexus, but has like some of those similar genres. But there is one song where it felt reminiscent of the title track from Nexus. Um, I'm just scrolling through my notes real quick um let me see and steve how for everybody's information was recently on the cover of jazz guitarist magazine right oh yeah apparently that was the july issue yeah um, yeah so never less is the one i'm thinking oh, of where okay. it sounds reminiscent of the song nexus yeah um so yeah like very like again like throughout the album there's some nice spacey vibes some gentle vibes and electric sounding stuff and it's just i'm really glad that uh, this saw the light of day and steve how got it finished and got it released you know absolutely let's uh go to some fan comments um you want to start yeah uh john coon says beautiful album can't wait for the new one lunar mist um and again these are like uh off for nexus because lunar mist just came out literally um, just came out today right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i kind of wonder if that's the quickest turnaround for us reviewing an album probably it got released yeah 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 the quest may have been close i have to go back and see but yeah um bob keely says i really like nexus it stayed in heavy rotation for quite a while i've only listened to lunar mist once so far so i don't have so that came in today steve that's comment. I've only yeah. listened to Lunar Mist once so far, so I don't have an opinion yet. But on first listen, I didn't hear as much that grabbed me as quickly as Nexus. But, all caps, and this is a big but, one T, uh, <laughs> that might be good news for long-term enjoyment. Yeah, I agree. The difference, absolutely. Yeah, I think I get what Bob is saying, how... We- there's still some stuff to discover on it. You have to listen to it more and see yeah. what more reveals itself, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you get that long-term enjoyment by doing repeat listens every now and then. Yeah. Um, and Doug Curran says, I love Nexus. I just got my digital copy of Lunar Mist this morning. I'm listening now and loving it as well. Very cool. I'm glad it's getting out there and people are, are getting it, you know? Yeah, it, it seemed like lots of people enjoy this. Like, I remember when Nexus came out, there were lots of great, uh, you know, lots of great feedback for the music. You know, people were really Excuse enjoying it. And I like that these are instrumental albums because, you know, lets the music speak for itself, yeah. you know? And I love how these are like, for the most part, I hope this wouldn't offend either of them, but for the most part, vignettes, you know, musically, especially, I mean, in the sense of length, lack of length, and what we're used to getting, you know, through Steve Howe's career and whatnot. Uh, There's so many that are less than than three minutes, and they work so well. They're just these short, very delicious, you know, pieces of music. Yeah, but they don't feel too short to me. Like no, feel... I was actually surprised. Yeah, when I yeah. listened for all, and then I looked at my playlist here, and I'm I'm looking at them, and they're well, I have them right here as well. You know, three hundred nine, two thirty eight, two hundred two, two nineteen. I'm like, what? It just didn't feel like that, like you say. Yeah, like like they feel like complete pieces, despite the length, and I think yeah. that's a mark of good music when the track doesn't feel like it either overstays its welcome or cuts off before it reaches its potential. Like, I think these were very well thought out. Yeah. Um, and over on the Drum Talk TV page where we simulcast this, I see we have a comment from uh, Jamuzu Koshiko who says, good morning, shout out, and then fire and heart emoji. So yeah, nice. thanks for tuning in. Absolutely, thanks folks. So why, why? Are we simulcasting on Drum Talk TV? Well, there's a few reasons. One reason, Virgil played drums. Another reason is because I founded Drum Talk TV, and that was almost 10 years ago. 
So Steve and I started thinking like when we interviewed Bill Bruford and of a few others, hey, we might as well just simulcast it and let more people know about this and just share it all in, in one interview. So that that's why folks just so you know. Yeah, and plus we have a drummer on every episode, so might as well. Yeah, we had Craig <laughs> Blundell with Oh that I get it. Oh, you mean Craig <laughs> Blundell? <laughs> we, Craig, yeah, sorry, we had Craig Blundell, Steve Hackett's drummer on, we had Steve Hackett himself on, we had Steve Hackett as someone else. We had what? Just kidding. <laughs> have a drummer on every episode that's funny yeah so um i'm just looking at our little doc real quick um so what are your thoughts on uh the music videos for these oh. I, mean, I guess i kind of described them yeah already, we talked but... about um the first one um I leaving had it, aurora yeah and i had it up still right here it's just the way the way it's lit and um it's it's very touching like steven said earlier in the episode if you didn't see it the montage of the fading in and out of pictures of virgil throughout his musical life and steve you know just solitary and sometimes both steve howes playing the two different guitar parts together on the classical guitar it's it's very well made and like you said it's very somber and uh, touching very touching yeah, and for Lunar Mist, we have music videos for the first three tracks. Mm -hmm. So the title track, you get like an astronaut and you see the moon. And um, I think there are also like some possibly some geometric shapes or that might be one of the yeah. later ones. But yeah, yeah I, I really like that one, how it, it fits the theme, you know, the title yeah. is Lunar Mist. So you got to include like the moon and... Um, I think also like some kaleidoscopic things were yeah. part of that as well. And I love the multi-color feel of that kind of complements the cover art that we've talked about. Yeah, absolutely. I'll show that again for anyone that might have missed it. Done by yeah. Virgil's daughter who just turned 10. Yeah, and more than you know also like feeds into that multiple color motif where it kind of looks like... Um, paint drops at some points you know it just really plays with like 3d animated art and whatnot yeah and and plexus uh, again had like the constellations and this illustration of like a centaur archer type of character mm -hmm. um and some more like geometric like digital shapes and um again like this all feels like it fits the aesthetic of the music and i know like in the past we've been like like for the quest, we'd like to see the band play, even if they're in separate locations. But this was like such a unique situation with these yeah. Virgil and Steve albums. So it's understandably so. And I think they did well with what they had and what they created to go against this music. Yeah, did, did the three of them, Dylan included, ever do anything together? Because I know Dylan has played on some of Steve's stuff. Did the three of them ever collaborate? Um, it's possible. If they have, I'm not sure what album that may have been. But, I mean, there might be something. That would really be cool. Yeah. Or Dylan and Virgil together. Yeah. Like there's, I don't know, maybe I, I would think there's got to be something, but you never know, you know, yeah. like w with the Wakeman uh, keyboardist, like it's sort of like a rare thing, like like they've talked about, you know. Yeah. Would that be Wakeman? Uh, I mean, uh, technically, since it's a last name, it would still be Wakeman's, I think, but it just, Wake, but that the, sounds the weird. Yeah, just like the Shinders, or it does sound weird, yeah. Yeah, it sounds weird, even if it's correct, you know. And what if what if it's referring to something that all three of them own? It would have the apostrophe after the S. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Did you have any other thoughts about Lunar Mist or even Nexus before we close out? Just the fact that um, and we'll go ahead and start Martian mood. You know, really, just the fact that both of them, um, I didn't know what to expect, and they were surprisingly uh, 
lots of really nice sonic layers and some really interesting playing that left a lot more space than I expected. You used the word ethereal. Excuse yeah. me, I got the hiccups. Ethereal, I got it from the dog. She's got the hiccups. Ethereal, and, and I love the space theme. I love the reminiscence of Steve Howe's, a lot of classic guitar sounds that we've heard through the decades. Um, so how, how about you? Yeah, like these were, like this was such a great collaboration. You know, it really feels like this music has its own identity. You know, Virgil and Steve created great stuff together. Yeah, you know, Steve really, um, you know, he saw what Virgil had and, you know, was very supportive. And I'm really glad that they got this out, you know. Absolutely. And Steve has put in the link there to Lunar Mist. Go ahead and check that out. Get it as well as the Nexus playlist on YouTube. Um, these are really, if you're Yes fans at all, if you're Steve Howe fans at all, this is a, I think these are must haves, they really are. And it, it really does say a lot about Virgil's talents and helps to preserve his musical legacy. Just very creative. And I, I'm, I gotta put on that, that Yes album that he did tonight. That's just blew my mind. Because, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I just thought it was going to be remixes of Yes songs, not like, you know, let me just remake these recipes completely with my own ingredients. It's great. Yeah, it, it's it's great that we're able to, you know, be able to pay, tri pay tribute to these people who've been gone. Um, I saw that on the Yes official page on Facebook. There was a quote from John Davison about Taylor Hawkins and Alan White and a couple tributes uh, he's got to be involved with. Um, yeah. yeah. And Alan's I, tribute is coming up in uh, on August, October 2nd, October 2nd. Yeah. Yeah. And it was also Alan White Day in Newcastle, Washington um, on the 12th of this month, yeah. I think, so, which is why uh, we shared the Imagine video on our Facebook page, yeah. um, Alan and his band White. But yeah, that October 2nd tribute will be interesting. They have like a good list of guests, um, including members of the current Yes lineup. You have Davison, Shellen, Downs, and um, Sherwood, plus Trevor Rabin. So that was a huge surprise yeah. to people. And, you know, people have been speculating and understandably, you know, the Alan White uh, Facebook page, you know, uh, Gigi and the family um, put out a post saying there's no need to speculate like why, why? certain people yeah, aren't I there and there will be video tributes from friends of Alan and stuff That's so like yeah and it's like I think you and I already know it's like what, well, yeah duh there's no need to like pe people don't need to speculate about this uh, stuff like seeing um yeah, I don't know if I worded that properly. No, I'm you saying, did. Yeah, I'm, say, I'm saying like no duh to the people who were speculating. Like I'm sort of saying that against them. It's like, why are you guys spending so much time on this? Like people have personal stuff, family stuff, contractual yeah. and scheduling stuff. It's like, and yeah, like I understandably, you know, the White family, they don't want people to be dwelling on that sort of stuff. Yeah. So just enjoy the tribute that's happening you know yeah absolutely thanks everybody for watching and for following what we do you can write us with comments or questions or show suggestions at yes shift podcast at gmail.com uh, if you're only listening to audio you may not know that we also do this live as video on the yes shift Facebook page. And as Steve mentioned a little bit ago, it's also simulcast on the Drum Talk TV Facebook page. And if you are watching video only and you don't want to look at us <laughs> and you want us to be mobile in your earbuds, you can follow us at anchor.fm slash yes shift. Yeah. And you can also, because that distributes to various podcasting platforms. So if you have like Apple Podcasts or something, which is what I generally use, we're on there. Like just search Yes Shift and you should be able to find us most likely. And we have a YouTube channel where yeah, I, that's put right. these, I put these up after the fact. I've been trickling in the 
you the videos that haven't been on there yet so yeah go ahead and give that a follow and uh enjoy the catalog and i believe the next time we're broadcasting on facebook is uh wednesday the 28th at i want to say 4 p.m yes pacific? that's correct 4 pacific okay yeah we're, we're celebrating uh 35 years of big generator which yeah it came out sometime this month in 1987 there are a few conflicting dates but we've just figured yeah we'll just do it then. the month yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah when we do that if you think of it if i don't remind me of what i thought was the biggest surprise of the show from the tour big surprise dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah i mean the, that that's like a huge shift in gears going from nexus and lunar mist to big oh. generator it's like a very different just, yeah yeah that's but, but that's what we do here on yes shift we shift it's, between like different right. sounding things that's lots of fun absolutely that'll be fun and i think we can say this now we okay, are going yeah. to be broadcasting live um possibly each day of the 15th 16th and 17th of October and we're both going to be in the same room and sometimes not even in a room we're going to be mobile in a vehicle because Steve and I will be do we want to say where we're going yet I mean I think we've already said oh on some okay. other episode where we're going but all right we're yeah, gonna we're... visit Steve's mom no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no yep. we're we're gonna see the secret path exhibition the Roger Dean exhibition in San Francisco yeah um, so if you're in the area or if you're there message us maybe we'll do a meetup at a restaurant or something that would be fun a yes shift yeah. Roger Dean fan meetup that'd be fun let's let's do that yeah, just reach out to us and yeah, I saw, be- I'll buy. I saw on the map there's a McDonald's, so we'll caravan through the drive through. <laughs> everyone gets a Happy Meal. Right. No, that'd be fun to plan something and everyone, every man and woman for himself when it comes to the check. But uh, I'll buy a round of drinks, whether it's alcohol or otherwise, to anybody <laughs> that comes. Happy to do that. Yeah, because they definitely serve alcohol at McDonald's. Uh, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they but, do um, in some countries, <laughs> Spain, Italy. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And there's no drinking age. Okay. In, in yeah, Spain. that's, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, that'll be a fun trip. And uh, we could probably t- cover a few different topics on that trip. I know there are like some news items we won't be able to get to because uh, of a couple other things so we might cover them on the trip or something and maybe a couple other just uh main topics that we've had on our list for a while so yeah yeah very very much looking forward to that great thanks everybody we will see you again very soon oh my cursor got loose sorry about that hello (laughs) hello boing 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 sorry (laughs) thanks for following what we do and cheers to virgil how on this day of his birth, 1975, September 23rd. Wonderful music, wonderful work by his father, Steve, to preserve the legacy. Thanks, everybody.